All right, blind viewers, I have another interview for you. Now, this one isn't uh, quite so happy and jovial, unfortunately. This is a interview with Sightseeing Sally, and we are going to be talking about a very serious subject. But I think you will enjoy this, and it's something that needs to be said, and I think you guys should all listen to this. So here it is. The experience of Sightseeing Sally. All right, what's up, blind viewers? Okay, now these interviews go a little differently than what's going to happen today. I am here with a lovely young lady, and we are going to talk about a serious situation. So, first of all, everyone, sightseeing Sally. How you doing, Sally? Good. Thank you, blind viewers. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. First of all, I want to say uh, welcome back. I hope you get this figured out and continue to post because we do miss you thank you i'm i'm planning on being back yes that's great news um and then again i want to thank you for coming to me and asking me to do this and help you get this out i really do appreciate it yes i certainly am happy that um i came to you and asked you to do this for me i think by speaking out uh, with you, I'll be able to get my message out effectively. Okay, so I'm sure everybody, just about everybody knows what's going on. But for those who uh, happen not to know what the situation is, uh, Sally has been stalked, harassed, and uh, bullied uh, through the Internet and other means. But uh, that's, that's what's basically going on. And uh, we're going to give her a chance to... Uh, Tell us the avenues that she she's taken, uh, any responses that she got, good, bad, indifferent, um, if she's gaining any traction. Uh, so we're going to let her tell her story. And uh, so the first thing I have to ask is, uh, so when, when did this all start, Sally? Well, I think we need to kind of go back to the beginning of when I started my channel. I started uploading videos in January of 2017, and it probably would have been around June of last year in 2017 that an individual that goes by a certain moniker, and I'm not going to repeat it right now just because I've decided that the less... I say the name, the less uh, publicity the person gets, the better that it probably is. I think that's very that wise. Individual, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's very wise, I think. That individual started posting comments on my channel. And at the time, I didn't know anything about the individual. And I treated that person like everyone else who comes on my channel and that is I interacted I replied back to comments I even when I was first starting my channel I did regular shout outs to viewers and in one of my earliest vlog type videos I gave the person a shout out now fast forward to about January of this year and the individual started posting videos himself to his own channel and I had become aware of that because he had mentioned that to me through one of his comments on my channel so being that YouTube encourages creators to interact with one another and I'm was at the time pretty active with interacting with a number of other YouTube creators on the platform. I went over and viewed the videos. And in the first few videos, he was doing kind of what I thought was like a Dave Hughes type, uh, you know, look at uh, channels. And my channel came up 
as being one of the channels he was focusing on. And initially, the comments were positive, and then over time, they got to be more critical of of what I was doing on my channel. Yeah, well, let me I'll let me add that, uh, uh, like you said, uh, uh, anyone of us that are you know that put up videos. Uh, that is part of the process. You, uh, you know, you read the comments, you answer comments, and um, well, just like you, I started watching your channel, and so he's like, you know, I seen that you watch me. I'm gonna go over and check you out. So we we support each other, and we leave comments. We interact with the the folks that are our followers or subscribers, and mm-hmm. so you know, it's not like you did anything out of the ordinary. It's what we all do. Correct. That's exactly right. So. Over the course of time, like I said, I noticed the comments or the commentary he was doing about my channel was more negative. And I tried to make a few jokes about some of the things that he said. And at one point, I just said straight out, like, hey, what's the deal? I was always decent to you when you commented on my channel. Why why are you giving me such a hard time with, with your commentary? And that I'm paraphrasing that because I don't remember my exact words, right, but right. that was the gist of the message. Yeah, and the the individual responded back with an apology. Wow! So I took that as a positive sign that okay, whatever, whatever it was that was going on we were going to like move beyond that and it was going to continue then like as a normal YouTuber to YouTuber type relationship. Right. Right. I you, didn't see it as being anything more than that. Right. You, you, uh, expressed your displeasure or whatever. And he said, Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't realize. Okay. And yeah. You, so you go on from there. Yeah. That, okay. So, so far seems pretty normal to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I think that's the adult thing to do, you know, to just confront it head on and ask straight out, you know, instead of me going back to my channel and all of a sudden saying nasty. You know what I mean? Right. It just, to me, it just seems the adult thing to do to just ask the question. Right. So from there, the individual uh, started posting videos that were less Dave Hughes style and more uh, vloggy type style showing places of interest and things like that. So I found myself watching the videos and I found a lot of it interesting. And I did respond by commenting frequently on, on those videos. In turn, the individual came over and was doing more positive comments on my channel. And again, to me, it just seemed normal. It seemed like, for example, uh, Stingray1975 is somebody who I've developed a a YouTube-type friendship with. And it just, so to me, it just seemed like a normal thing. Right, right. Yeah, I see you. And and like with you, too. You know, we've gotten to talk, and it just seems normal. Nothing weird or strange. Right, yeah. I know when, you know, Stingray or... A couple other people, they do streams. I I see you in there quite often. And, yeah, there's, you know, regulars that kind of go around to certain people. So, yeah, I can can get where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, Where where about in the time frame are we now that where where we're up to? We're about uh, towards the end of March, early April. Okay. All right. So then right around the middle of April, I started making some changes to, like, my channel description, my channel art, cover art, or whatever, the and the emoticon. I was trying to revitalize things. It seemed that, um, I don't know, I just thought it was time for a change for what, what I had there. And I was kind of hoping that now I was back in Wisconsin to start promoting some of what I was going to be doing around here. It just seemed kind of like the right thing to do. I also had gotten my stickers finally, and I was going to be selling them. Um, So the way I decided to approach that was to include a PayPal link 
rather than get a P.O. box and yeah. deal with that. Yeah, <laughs> that was a pretty smart move. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the individual said back to me that, oh, I see you added PayPal to your channel. You've updated some stuff. I think that's a really good thing. And then within a couple of days, I noticed I had gotten a new person on my Patreon. And initially, whoever it was came on with, I guess, what you would say, like an, an anonymous type uh, persona because they didn't use their real name and they used a picture of a cat or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, cool. Somebody knew. I wonder who it is. But, you know, I didn't have any idea. Well, Within probably 24 to 48 hours, the individual revealed himself to be the person who this is all centered around. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, that's super nice. And then within, again, um, it was probably within that it was in a very short period of time, the individual also sent me an email. And in that email, they indicated that they knew where I lived. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. And I was really disturbed by that right off the bat. I was like, oh. So Marty which everybody knows his name now, Marty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's no longer the mystery man. He has right. a name. <laughs> now, Marty is like, you know what? There's a good chance that somebody is going to get your personal information at some point. Don't worry about it. You know, once it's out there, it's out there. Because I was worried about being doxxed. I'm like, well, okay, so this person has this information. What are they going to do with it? Yeah. Kind of and then Marty's like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. You're worried about something you don't need to worry about. So I'm like, okay. So I approached it like I would just treat him, continue to treat him like any other of my patron supporters. I sent a postcard and thanked them. I sent an email thanking them for it. Uh, there was an additional, I think right off the bat, PayPal contribution where he had put a note in saying uh, for, I think because the way Patreon is set up, it's a month later after. So it was basically the note was indicating to me for that month until the Patreon kicked in sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. I and I thanked him for that. And then everything was at that point seemed okay. Again, I was a bit upset by the fact that he knew where I lived, but Marty had reassured me, you know, it'll be okay. Don't worry about it kind of thing. Yeah, I mean <laughs> It's it's odd to say, but yeah, I mean, if anybody really wants to find out things, you know, now with the internet, if they want to dig and they want to spend the time, they're going to find it out. So, I mean, not that it's not a big deal, but it's not as big a deal as before the internet days, you know? Right, right. And I mean, you know, I tried to look at it from the point of view, too, is, okay, how often in the past did, you know so-and-so that you know from like your hometown um you've heard rumors about them so you do a quick ch -ch 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 right. look up on the internet to see oh is that really true kind right. of thing <laughs> right yeah you know out of curiosity so i was trying to i guess you know give them the benefit of the doubt that it really wasn't that big of an issue and again marty you know I figured if Marty thought it was something I should be concerned about, you know. Yeah, that makes that sense. Makes perfect sense. About it. For sure. So, I sent that postcard. Now, I don't know 
I don't know that the individual knows this, but, and so this would be like news. The individual posted a video showing himself ripping up the postcard. And I happened to catch the video. It was only up for a short period of time. And I don't know what caused the individual to rip up the postcard. I just know I saw that person ripping up the postcard. And then at that point in my gut, I got this sinking feeling that things weren't going to be be so good. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, that seems a little strange. Yeah. And so and with patron or Patreon, the person has to be an active patron in order for you to block them. So in between the individual pulled out so the individual posted the video of himself tearing up the postcard and the individual pulled his patron donation. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, well, if that's the case, then maybe things are just going to be like, it never happened and we'll move on from this. Yeah. You know? So then the individual... Must have changed his mind. I'm I'm speculating because I I don't know. I didn't ask, and all of a sudden I know I get a, a notification from Patreon saying I got another patron donor, and I looked and it was the individual again. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this I'm not gonna be dealing with this. So my first instinct at that point was to block them off my Patreon. So then this is, I guess this was around the time where, when things are starting to click and you're starting to go, okay, this isn't like everyone else. Something's, something's a little off. So this is yes. kind of when it really kind of started to kick in. Yes, exactly. And this again is in April. This is all transpiring in April, probably like the last two weeks of April. Like gotcha. the, the time frame is. And so then after I blocked him off Patreon because obviously Patreon Patreon must give him like a notification of some sort saying your Patreon pledge has been declined or whatever. Yeah. Um, I got money put into my PayPal along with a note from him saying he got noticed that it was blocked. If that was my doing, please refund his PayPal money, etc. So I took the time, I, I dropped it up in email, I asked my mom to listen to how I wrote it to make sure that I wasn't sending any kind of inappropriate message. And basically, the email was saying that I suspected that the individual might be feeling more towards me than what would be a friendly type of youtube uh relationship right. i'm not sure if i use the word relationship but i again i had my mom you know give me that sanity check on it to make yeah. sure i wasn't like sending any weird message with it that was a smart and move I, said, I didn't think it was appropriate because i am i have somebody in my life and i'm not looking for any other type of relationship. And I didn't think it would be appropriate for me to take money from somebody that had had those types of feelings for me. And so I sent that off and the individual responded back. Um, they seemed to be okay with that saying, okay, if that, you know, if that's the case, Yes, please refund my money, you know. And I did that. Um, oh, what was the other part of it? Oh, the individual also said when um, I sent the money back through PayPal, then they must have been able to send me another note because I got a note back saying that they thought that the Mr. or Marty was like an act channel <laughs> that he wasn't for real okay all right 
Yeah, so it's starting to get even stranger. Yes. So then I decided to write a letter to Dave Hughes. Uh, I was going to send him stickers anyway. So along with the stickers, I sent him a note. And I just said, look, I have this issue that's going on. I'm not really sure how to handle the situation. I said that I did it. I made, I tried to make light of it by adding a joke at the end saying I didn't want to end up like, and I used an example of a celebrity that had been shot yeah. and, and killed by an overly um, fanatical type fan. Uh, but my message was clear that I was looking for some sort of guidance as to how to handle the situation because I'm thinking, well, all right, so I blocked them now on Patreon and, you know, the individual thinks that I'm making stuff up or whatever and they're not really backing away. And so Dave called, or, well, he asked to call me, so I... I called him then after I confirmed that it was really him right? and talked to him on the phone. And that's where he said I should just block and ignore. I'm like, okay. So this is at the beginning of May now. And I was thinking to myself, if I just block and ignore the individual without putting out like some sort of notice, like saying, Hey, you need to leave me alone. If it would continue to escalate and I would have to go to the police, the police are going to ask me right off the bat, did you tell him to leave you alone? Yeah. But I'm going to be like, well, no, I just blocked and ignored him. Well, I just felt like it wasn't going to be sufficient enough. So I then drafted up another email and sent that out on May 4th. And in that email is when I told him that I thought it was inappropriate that he was, you know, trying to figure out personal information about me, wanting to know the nature of my relationships, um, you know, stuff like that. I said that I thought he might be, and I said I thought he might be stalking me on other channels because I had some weird stuff going on with a, a user that I had never seen before. And so I just suspected it was him. Yeah. And um, told him that I found it creepy and a form of harassment and that he just needed to leave me alone. Well, then that just like sparked everything that I showed in the video. Um, with regards to the flurry of emails he sent back to me, um, the videos he started uploading like right after, and it just it seemed like it made the situation a hundred percent worse. Yeah, that seems like that's what kind of really pushed him and triggered him. Um, well, I know when you put out your your video about the whole situation not the recent one before right you know that said you know i'm i'm off of youtube and everything mm -hmm. it kind of uh i guess you'd say sparked a bunch of interest it was like okay what's she talking about so i know there was an influx to his channel and I, i'll admit it, i was one of them i went on like what is this dude and i went and i watched and i saw one of the videos um it was the one with the balloons where he had the little those little balloons with the 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 candle or whatever it is underneath and it had your name all over it and I love you and all that stuff and sent it off. Um, and then I was like, okay, yeah. And I was like, all right, no more. I'm not going to check this guy out anymore. Um, I did see a couple other, I don't want to call them parody channels, but channels that took little clips and was saying about things. Um, and I saw him saying something about that. You were a shapeshifter and your eyes changed. And I mean, some really weird 
I mean, as a dude, I was kind of like, whoa, you know? So I could imagine how you felt as a female going through all that, you know? It, oh, man. And um, I was going to say, so I asked you a question, actually, that you answered, which was, uh, you know, what would you say to anybody that said that, oh, yeah, well, just ignore it and it'll go away. So you already answered that question. It's just not, you know, something. You need that paper trail. You need the steps so if it does get to that point that you can say yes i did this that 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 and i think that was a very smart move thank you yes exactly and um right after i posted that video on may 22nd where it said i was quitting youtube uh, one of my viewers followers uh contacted me she stepped up she's been wonderful i've gotten to know her i consider her a good friend of mine um she is a practicing attorney in pennsylvania and granted she cannot give me legal advice because we're we're talking different states so right. she can't legally represent me but she was able to offer perspective on the situation because you know she has a general knowledge of the law she has over 20 some years experience practicing and she specializes in, you know, family law where she's dealing with divorce cases where there are instances of stalking and harassment going on between spouses and things like that. Oh, so she's yeah. very familiar with that. And her take on the steps that I did, the, I mean, I forwarded her a, Every, you know, the emails, the interactions between us and her take on it was she thought that I handled it as best as I possibly could at the time. Now, she thought it was good that I told them yeah. to leave me alone. Well, after the after the, the video where you said, you you know, you were you about had enough, um, I'm sure you were flooded with. Uh, Maybe not directly, but indirectly, if you, you know, still paid attention to what was going on YouTube. I'm sure you were uh, flooded with tons of opinions of what you did right, what you did wrong, w why you let this happen, and all that. Did, did you see all that, or did you kind of block it away for a while? How did you handle that part of it? Um, I did initially, you know, read some of the commentary. Marty... Um, he did a lot of like the fielding of reading comments and things like that for me. So I wouldn't have to uh, necessarily deal with all that because I was at that point just like so fed up, upset, you know, it was causing me a lot of anxiety. I wasn't sleeping good at night. I was angry. You know, and it was evident in the way I was acting towards my family members. Yeah. You know, I was very angry about what happened, what it was doing. You well, know, that's a me. that's a good point that you just brought up. That you know, we see we see a YouTuber that we watch, and you know, you, you kind of think you know people, and you know, you know, you know, you don't know them, no, but you know, you watch somebody mm -hmm. for a year or more, and you're like, I, I kind of know this person. And um, we only see what you put up there for us to see. And, I mean, it, when something like this goes on, I don't think people take the time to stop and think that, hey, you know, this is affecting her sleep. This is affecting her relationships, her real relationships in real life with the people that are around her, her loved ones and everything. And I think that's something that a lot of people have overlooked in this whole situation. Yeah, I, I agree. Because what is shown on YouTube, and I know Evie Nova, I bring her up because she also stepped up uh, right after I put out that I'm quitting video. Uh, she did a segment on her own channel talking about stalking and harassment. Um, she pointed viewers um, about, talked about my situation. She reached out to me personally. And um, she's made a very good point on her channel talking about how 
what you see on YouTube is only a small fraction of what goes on in a person's life. Yeah, that's true. Very true. And, and the other thing I wanted to say about that is I put that video up. Um, I'm quitting YouTube. I know it was very disturbing for for people to watch. I know my family, my parents especially, were upset by by that. They had no idea. You know, it's not like I'm calling them up every day, yeah. you know, unloading on them. And so for them, it was very disturbing. But I thought I was doing the right thing by sharing that. I think it's important for people to see that as shocking as it is, how upsetting it was for me. Because people, I don't think, necessarily realize when they're sitting there on their keyboards and they're saying stuff to people. And granted, I, I, I want to make sure that people understand there's a distinction between being a troll and online stalking and harassment. Yes. But my point that I'm trying to make here is that People don't think about necessarily before they fire off whatever message they're sending online or through a chat or a Facebook post or whatever about the consequences of what that can actually do to a person. Yeah, I mean, so, you have, you know, we're all human and we all have feelings. Even the, the biggest, baddest, toughest guy who's, oh, I just let it roll off my back. Everybody has feelings, and you all have that breaking point. And, yeah, if you get one or two nasty comments here and there, eh, eh, it might sting a little bit. But when it is just a constant barrage, it can tear a person down. And, yeah. again, we're just talking right now about the silly troll stuff, which is I think is not what you were dealing with at all. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to address the fact that yeah, you, uh, disturbing. Yeah, you, the video was a little disturbing. Um, it made me sad. It made me angry. It made me a lot. Of, I feel a lot of things. But I think the main thing that it did was it made other people aware. Like I had no idea. I I was clueless. You know, <clears throat> and I know. Like right after that, it was it was the big buzz. And I know a couple other female YouTubers um, that said, oh, this person started popping up in my stuff and everything else. And uh, they took care of it right away because you let them know. Uh, yeah. Other people that weren't aware, they had, you know, mutual subs or whatever that said, hey, yo, 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 that dude, pff, out. This is what he's doing. Out, out, out. So... Yeah, as disturbing as it was, it was a service that made everyone aware, and uh, the target was there, and it was like, no. And so, yeah, once uh, you kind of put the brakes on it, it was like, okay, who's next? And by you outing the whole situation, it made people aware, so there wasn't a next, at least not easy next let's put it that way so i for one will thank you for and i know it had to be hard to sit there in front of the camera and spill your guts and show your emotions like that but yeah i think it was it was needed agreed i think it was needed too i know i've gotten some criticism on that uh there are people that think i fed into his obsession by doing that or gave him the extra notoriety that he shouldn't be getting. Uh, but if I hadn't done it, people still wouldn't know. Right. The other women YouTubers would still be clueless as to what's going on. Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, I was doing a lot, one of my thirsty, thirsty live streams, and, you know, it was like somebody said, hey, he's here. And I was like, what? You know, and it was like, okay, and get him out, and he's gone. But mm -hmm. before your video, he'd have been there. I wouldn't have known anything. I wouldn't have had a clue who this person was. So, yeah, I, anybody who says that it was feeding it, no, it wasn't. It was, it was warning other YouTubers, especially the females, and letting all their subscribers and commenters know that, hey, 
we're all on the lookout for you, girl. We got your back, and I think it was awesome. So, Thank I you. for one, if nobody else, I for one. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess now we're at the point where it's like, all right, um, we noticed the problem, we addressed the problem the best we could. Um, we let everybody in YouTube world know what was going on, and we went away to handle this on our own. So now, what did you do? Did was the first thing say, okay, YouTube, I'm going to try to contact you, or what? What was your? What did you start doing now? Okay, so what I started doing. Uh, well, first off, I want to say again, thank you to everybody that stepped up. Uh, there's so many people that have been out there that have helped me. Uh, you know, Rosie H, uh, love her to death. She's been very supportive emotionally for me. She's been there during the entire process of the after. Um, I had reached out to her and talked to her, and she was there as as an emotional as emotional support. Uh, Kentucky Ranger. Uh, thankful for him. He's been very instrumental in getting video footage to me. And uh, otherwise, I would have been setting up my tripod and my laptop every single time a video came up for, you know, for documentation purposes. Uh, I don't know how to do where you copy videos like off of the internet. So that was my rudimentary way of, you know, getting that data. And yeah. Uh, Kentucky Ranger was stepped up and has helped me and is still helping me. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed there was a few uh YouTubers I was watching. I can't off the top of my head think of names and I don't want to get it wrong or omit anyone, but I noticed there was a few that were saying, you know, I have some some videos also for Sally if she needs them and so there was people that were stockpiling the evidence to help you if if need be. So that was that was awesome and that's another thing yeah. that your video, as rough as it was, did it made people say, "Okay, we got to help this girl." And I, so, all right. So where where are we at now? Where do we start doing? Okay, so what I started doing, um, compiling all this information, like I mentioned earlier in this interview, um, a friend of mine who's an attorney uh, stepped up. She reviewed. I wrote an eight-page summary explaining from the time I started doing YouTube videos to where we're at now, basically, right. and what happened with with the individual. Uh, laid it all out in a manner that was easy to read, follow, and understand. I also, you know, made references to specific, okay, so if I'm talking about where I quote something, I refer to the specific video and the timestamp in the video so that when the police detective gets it and picks it up and reads it, they can say, oh, okay, so in this video, at this point in time, the individual says or does this, and they go to that video on the flash drive I've provided to them, they can find it easy. It's not that I've just bring a pile of stuff to them and say, here you go. Right. No, I wanted, I wanted to make sure they took it seriously and that if I made it as easy enough for them as possible, it would be less of a headache for them, I yeah, guess, to, yeah. if you, to deal with. If you point them to, to specific points of interest in your mind, if they actually look at it and they go, oh, okay, they'll be more likely to actually go through more of the stuff in detail and pick out with their trained eye and things. So yeah, that was a very smart organized thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then I also put together a timeline that kind of outlined like, excuse me, the major events or certain things that I thought were important or key for them. And I included that on the flash drive. I also um, took a bunch of screenshots of stuff that was being, like I said, said that wasn't true or was stated in a way like facts that were twisted to try and like be inflammatory or, you know, about me and Marty. And I put all them screenshots on the flash drive. 
And then I reached out to other YouTubers. Uh, I was looking for anybody that had dealt with this individual prior that had maybe screenshots of their own. And I was able to get um, some information from a couple other YouTubers. I don't want to call them out by name because I don't know if they want to be mentioned right. by name or not. Totally understandable. This. Yeah, that's understandable. And then... Um, so, so the flash drive contained all this information. I had the summary. I took out like pr the printouts, the um, emails, the stuff from PayPal, the stuff from Patreon. Printed all that up, put it together, and then I asked my friend, the attorney, to make some phone calls because I wasn't sure initially. You know, am I reporting this here in my home? jurisdiction or am I making a phone call to Ohio you know I wasn't wasn't quite sure oh, that's a good question actually yeah so she she did some reaching out to people and it was determined that the best thing and most appropriate because I'm here in Wisconsin and this is where it's happening for me at least this is where I need to start as far as filing a complaint. So she also, after I'd asked her, she made contact with our county's district attorney and talked to him on the phone. He was helpful. He suggested that I come down in person to the sheriff's department. Because you got to remember, I live out in the <laughs> sticks. <Yeah. laughs> I don't live in a city, you know, so we're talking, the county sheriff is going to be the one that handles it. Right. And uh, the district attorney also said it would probably be a good idea if a phone call was made to the sheriff's department ahead of time to alert them that I'd be coming down. So I asked my friend to do that. Uh, she made it clear that she wasn't representing me, yeah. that she was just, you know, a friend trying to help me out. But I felt that with her being an attorney, it might hold more weight that it, that the situation would be taken more seriously. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't, what I didn't want to happen was for me to go down there and be like, I'm having this issue, and for them to be like, you know, okay, here, and then shoot me out the door, and then that's it. it just goes. Yeah, go home and turn off your computer, lady. That'll solve all your problems. Yeah, I, exactly. I get it. <laughs> Stop being on YouTube, and yeah. you won't have this issue. Yeah. So she made the phone call. And she connected with, I think it was the receptionist or the administrative person for the department. And then she called me back and said, yes, they know that you're coming down. You know, how quickly can you be there? And I'm like, uh, I'll get in the car and get going, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So it went, went at that point, it went really fast. It went from she called me in the morning to say I made contact with the district attorney to her um, saying, okay, how quickly can you be there to now I'm there. Yeah. Marty and I drove down there, brought the stuff. I met with a lieutenant right off the bat. Um, but what I found was strange was that he asked me, okay, so what, why are you here kind of thing? I gave him a brief synopsis of it. I gave him, you know, all the information that I had brought along, the report, the printouts, the flash drive, gave it to him. He said, okay, just wait here for a moment. He went in back. He was gone, I don't know, a few minutes if that. Comes back out, hands me a sheet of paper. It's like a standard, probably, sheet of paper that they give out to victims reporting crimes yeah has key phone numbers and there's a spot for a complaint number you know that he had written on there and he said he told me that 
a detective would be assigned to look into it further. And he also indicated that at a minimum, a phone call would be made over to the Marysville, Ohio Police Department to find out if the individual was known for oh, okay. any of this type of behavior yeah, with yeah. them. And that was basically it. You know, he reminded us that if we saw anything strange, you know, any weird vehicles that we didn't recognize hanging out in our neighborhood, that sort of thing to call. Which, of course, you know, if that was happening, of course, that would be the well, yeah, I'd be making a phone call. That's the, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. We all do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Whether know, we're so being harassed or not. <laughs> I'm on this heightened awareness, you know, of, okay, who's in the neighborhood? Who's hanging around? You know, is somebody going to be coming to pay me a visit? And that's, that's another thing that, you know, I thought about. It was like, okay, now, first well, I'm a guy, so it's like a little bit different. Not much. I would be freaked out too as long as it's like that. But I'm a a city dweller, so there's always comings and goings. So if someone was going to try to, I don't know, sneak up on my house or you know lurk outside my house, all my neighbors would be going, "Hey, yo, dude," you know, or they'd be getting a hold of me, or they'd be shushing them off. But you're in a totally different situation. You're out in, like you said, in the stick, and anybody could stand out there for. You know, forever, and no one would see them or really notice them unless your dogs went ballistic or something like that. So, I mean, I understand your, I don't want to say paranoia, but I understand your, I guess you used the term heightened awareness. And, you know, so I, I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially because I don't think people realize that in the area that we are in, there are plenty of empty sitting homes for a good portion of the year because this is more of a vacation area yeah so people come up on weekends they don't come up every weekend and there's very few that live full-time up here so you know the chances of somebody noticing something are a lot less than if i was like living like in town or even in you know farther south like in in a rural area farther south where you have neighbors there that are all the time yeah now how was how was the anonymous marty (laughs) the anonymous man marty how was he was how was he handling all this madness well you know I have to say he put up with a lot, (laughs) but (laughs) he was also very good about recognizing that, you know, I was really freaked out by it. And he did stuff to, you know, try and help ease some of that, you know, with as far as, you know, security goes with the house and um you know i i used to walk my dogs by myself well we've now made that something that we do together yeah kind of thing you know so he's been very responsive that way um thankfully yeah did did you try to reach out to youtube at all or is that's pretty much impossible isn't it well What I did was, you know, on YouTube, their reporting system is very impersonal. So you click on a button, it brings you to a page where you fill out your complaint. And the way it's set up is it doesn't really allow for you to document a whole lot other than, like, say, comments. It, like... It's like almost like auto generated. So if you can click on saying that you're having a harassment issue, it'll pull up like videos. And if it recognizes the user made comments on your videos, it brings them up so you can click on on them to include them. But it doesn't really, you know, if 
if the person that on there making comments, like, it doesn't really allow for you to report instances like this. And, I, and so I tried to use the system. I tried reporting individual videos of his. I mean, it truncates. So after so many characters, it cuts off whatever you're writing, you know, yeah, about it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's almost, we were talking earlier, and it's almost like, like a tweet. You have so many characters you're allowed to use, and that's it. So, you mm -hmm. know, get it down and get it down to the point, and how can you do uh, a full report of what, this extensive thing that's been happening to you and 120 characters are, you know, yeah, it's kind of silly. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, you know, I did that multiple times and after a while I got frustrated and I just gave up because I'm like, well, nothing's happening. You don't get an acknowledgement of whether or not they even received it, you know, so it goes into this black hole. Yeah, probably. <laughs> And you don't know, did somebody actually look at the video that you're, you know, reporting? And if you try to report a channel again, it's it's the same, the same thing. So I tried that multiple times and found that I didn't get a response and the videos were still up. So it basically led me to believe that if somebody on the other end did look at it they didn't take it seriously and so they just gave it a pass well i know my thoughts are if uh someone can get someone's video flagged or a strike or whatever for some sometimes very very trivial stuff mm -hmm. why something serious like this can't get youtube's attention and uh, I personally think that Google and YouTube need to address this, especially since they're uh, they still in that big platform of, you know, we're anti-bullying and you can't use this word or that word or this word. I, I think this needs to be, there needs to be some, some avenue where people can, uh, I don't know, maybe fill out a form and actually get a phone call if need be. Now, I'm sure it's like everything else on YouTube. They probably, they would probably get a million of them a day, but there, there has to be something I, I would think, you know, especially for a platform this large. I agree with you. I think there needs to be a change to it because what I found out too, is that this individual has a past history of, of doing this. So why is it that this individual is still allowed on the platform? And the way it's set up right now, you can open up multiple accounts. And I know, you know, there are people out there that do it for whatever reason. Yeah. But my point is, is at some point, can't they block an IP address if there's enough complaints out there about about a specific IP address? Can't they just block it? There has to be something. I mean, I was on my live stream, the last one that I did, and um, there was a person that came in and started some stuff, and, you know, my my moderators got rid of them, and then they came right back with a different name. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, I went and seen how, there was 15, the same person, 15 times they got deleted with, you know, a, a variation of their name. So we, you know, that's how I knew it was the same person because it was like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then mm -hmm. the intimidator, the assassin, the this, you know, and it just changed the name in just a little bit, but 15 of them. So, I mean, that's another thing that I think is, is ridiculous. You know, you'll strike a channel and shut them down, give them a little slap on the hand. Okay, you can't do anything for two weeks or whatever it is. So what do you do? You go over and you start a new channel and you just pick up where you left off and continue. So what is it? What good does it do? Exactly. And I think it's funny, too, though, that um, this individual, you know, is allowed to, the videos are just allowed to continue to be out there. Yeah. And there have been channels that have had other videos taken down for what I would think would be lesser offenses. I agree. You know. Yeah. Well, what I would encourage anyone out there that is listening to this or watching this, I would encourage anybody that knows who we're talking about and um, has had any interaction 
or contact and had a, a problem and had to deal with this person, I would encourage you to uh, make a report with YouTube. And I would also encourage you to reach out to Sally so she can add this information to her list of things. So that way, maybe we can uh, show a pattern. And so when the, the police or whoever is doing this goes, oh, yeah, this one lady lives in the woods. Who cares? But if they see that there's several people that the same thing is happening to or similar things, maybe they'll have to look. If enough of you guys start complaining and poking and bugging and making phone calls and reporting. So that would be my little suggestion to anyone out there listening. Thank you. I appreciate that. I definitely would welcome anybody's input if, if they have it. Yeah, I, I think that would help. I mean, it's just one of those things like you know like i said if it's like okay yeah you know you report someone for you know said, we'll just say it like a teacher uh, you know this this teacher's bullying my kid uh yeah okay well all right all right now when five other parents come and say it now we have to look at it you know uh, and i'll even say the the we'll say the hashtag me too stuff you know one lady comes up and says this guy did this Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when 40 other ones step forward, now we have to take this seriously. So, you know, Sally was brave enough to uh, put herself out there and make her uh, tearful, emotional video. So anybody else that has gone through this, if you guys band together, they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to look at it. Now, I'm not saying go out here and, you know, say his name and go to his videos and do all that stuff and give him all the publicity that he wants. But no, there is a way to do it. Um, have you had any, I guess you would say, uh, return from the police? Have you heard anything positive? Uh, have you just been kind of like brushed off? Is anyone doing anything that, that you can see? From my perspective of how it's being handled, I don't think it's being pursued at, at the appropriate level of attention. It's my, my opinion that in speaking with the detective now on two on the two occasions that I've spoken to him in, in any great lengths, what the conversation has been about, I've asked about whether or not a restraining order would be appropriate. And I keep getting uh, a sticking point with him about whether or not I really, or that they really know for sure who the individual is that's sitting on the computer doing it. And my thought is that could easily be uh, figured out by doing a look at the Ohio's DMV system and pulling up the ID, the photo ID or driver's license of the individual for the information that I provided to them. And then all they have to do is say, oh, yes, this photo matches the individual that's appearing in the videos or no, it doesn't. If yes, it does, then you have a positive match, and now you have somebody that you can, you know, name in uh, filing uh, with the petitioning with the court for a yeah. restraining order. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like I'm being prejudiced or anything like that. But I, what is your? Do you think that, say, if you lived in a in a bigger city? with, uh, I don't know, say a, a police department that was used to more of this and that had maybe more technology and more ways to, you know, track like cyber stuff, do you think it would be a little bit different maybe? I think so because one of the first things the detective said to me was that he had no experience with this in handling anything like this and that he would need to reach out to other agencies to get guidance. Mm. Well, it's been three weeks and 
as far as I know, he's only played phone tag with the individuals at these other agencies. So I don't know if he's gotten any guidance or how serious he is about getting guidance. You know, and I just know that he has no experience in dealing with this. I I think uh, from my opinion and my perspective, I think it's kind of like a double-edged sword. One, um, you're not in a big city where they're going to say, well, we got people being stabbed, murdered, shot, and we got, uh, we're just swamped with real shit lady and your, your little trivial crap is nothing to us. You know, you, you have that as opposed to, well, yeah, we have all this stuff and we're used to people, you know, you know, putting the things on the gas tank and taking everyone's identity and doing this and that. So cyber crime is a, a thing that they're used to. So it's kind of like a, a, you know, where you're at, it's probably not a place where they're like swamped with all kinds of things and they actually do have time. They just don't, I don't think they have the experience or the, the equipment to uh, deal with it. So again, I think it's kind of like a double edged sword. So it's a tough situation it really is. Yeah, I don't think people realize how difficult it is to pursue this matter through, like, the criminal justice system. I I know there were a lot of viewers out there that left comments to me about how I needed to report them to the authorities and all that. And obviously, I took that to heart and, and did that. But I want people to be aware. It's not it's not like, oh, you go down there and immediately an arrest is made or charges are filed right. or anything like that. Well, I think something has to be done because it's the world we live in, um, whether it be your situation or similar situations. But the the fact of the matter is, is uh, we, we don't even have to leave our homes anymore. We can uh, say, hey, Siri, and we can have food delivered to our house. Uh, we can do everything. You know, you, you uh, go on Amazon and you say, hey, I want to buy, uh, you know, a new chair. And then the next thing you know, on Facebook and your email and everything, you're getting bombarded with stuff about chairs. And so, you know, your information's out there, and this is the way we live now. So there has to be a way for them the, the law enforcement, everything, and the rule makers and all that to police this area because it's a high crime area and people, you know, they steal your identity and the next thing you know, you just bought a house and a car and a new uh, credit cards in your name and you don't have a clue. So it's not just your situation. It's a bigger thing. And I think we need, the internet needs to be policed somehow. Now I know a lot of people are going to, I don't believe that. It's just one more thing in our business. Well, everybody's in your business already and we need we need good people in our business as well as just the bad ones. So that's, um, that's a good point, you know, especially because the online world is so much become a part of like the normal yeah. world. I think uh, the rest of our society kind of needs to catch up with that as far as like, you know, the policing of it or the law enforcement end of it. Um, the other part of it is I think there is a perception. And again, this is, this is coming from me as, as a victim reporting this type of crime. I think there's a perception that surrounds a lot of these type of um, crimes that somehow the victim is responsible for it because one of the things that I noticed with the detective is he spent a lot of time going over what type of videos I posted to YouTube and what I was doing to receive money for them instead of looking at the individual's actions he's focused on me as to what did I do to create the situation? Again, that that's my perception of it. And I think a lot of victims out there feel that when they report certain crimes. Yes, I, I, I agree. It's, it's uh, the same thing I equate it to. Uh, now, it's not the same, but I equate it to a, a woman who may have been sexually assaulted. Uh, they don't want to go and report it for many reasons. And one of the reasons is they know they're going to be uh, 
scrutinized and put through the ringer and made to be the cause of the whole thing. Well, you did this, so you dressed that way, or, you know, yes, I know you're, you know, 40 now, but when you were 18, you did this, and, and you know, it's all going to come out. And, and so they were like, okay, yeah, whatever. And uh, it, I think it's, it's pretty sad. Um, but what, what, what do you, do, do you have any, uh, do you, do you have anything to say to someone? Cause you know, they're going, someone's going to say, well, y- you encouraged it. You know, when we were talking earlier in the time, like, you, you talked nice to him and you accepted money and you did, you encouraged this behavior. Um, so you, I don't know. You brought this onto yourself. Uh, do you have anything, any reply to someone that would have that, even that thought? I would say, um, I would say this one, uh, I didn't encourage the individual to send me money. In fact, when I realized what the individual's intent or the way he was thinking about me, as soon as I realized that, I took steps to return that money because I didn't want to encourage that. And I tried to make it very clear to him that I was in a a committed relationship and Anybody out there that thinks a victim asks for whatever crime is committed against them, I feel sorry for you because there's going to come a day when something happens to you or one of your loved ones. And then at that point, you're going to be crying about how, oh my God, this happened to me and uh, and you're going to get the same treatment. Exactly, exactly. And as I stated before, I I see you did nothing out of the ordinary that any of us with the, I, I guess they use the word creators, but any of us who actually have a YouTube channel that put up videos, you did exactly what we all do. You read comments, you uh, interact with your subscribers and your commenters, and you... You don't want to be nasty to them and chase them away. I mean, that you want more. You don't want to shoo them away. And if they're not doing anything ridiculous, then you interact with them. And, uh, yeah, for anyone to say anything different, well, then you are one of those little faceless, nameless people that are just on YouTube to watch or leave nasty comments because we all do exactly what Sally did. She didn't do anything different. And as soon as the things went crazy, turned left and she got the red flags everything that she did and said i think she handled it in the best way especially as it's happening to you at the time everyone can armchair quarterback and say well i would have or she should have but when you're in the moment you have to think and act and you you reached out to uh you know you you said you reached out to your your parents and got things read so you didn't come off in a different way uh you contacted a lawyer friend who uh, wasn't in your jurisdiction, but still knows case law and everything, doesn't know your state law, but still can, you know, advise you and direct you, point you in the direction that you should go. And so I think you handled the situation very well. And uh, I think your letting everyone know was a, a good service to everyone out here on YouTube. So I applaud you, and I think you handled it in the best way that you could. And uh, I, for one, don't think this is a troll situation. I think this is much, much more than that, indeed. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. So I think we we got her her story out here, and uh, we have everybody's attention. I hope so, at least. But uh, I do have a question, and that is, what what was your purpose? I mean, you could have just, you know, said, hey, I'm out of here, not made any more YouTube videos, and just went and handled this. Why did you bring it to everyone's attention? Uh, blind views, I, I know, I'm sure there are people wondering that. And the reason that I brought it to everybody's attention is this, is that, If I would have just simply gone about my life, 
you know, pulled off a YouTube or even if I would have just like ignored the individual and just kept making videos on my channel and not said anything about it, I would not have been able to prevent it or try to prevent it from happening to somebody else. And, and actually several people had left comments on that video, on that May 22nd video saying, you know, if you just walk away and not do anything, the individual's just going to move on to somebody else. And that really resonated with me. And I thought about that. And I'm like, you know what? There shouldn't be anybody else on the YouTube platform, male or female, especially female, that should have to go through this. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to to go forward with my life if I let it happen to somebody else. If I didn't at least try everything in my own power to do to get the message out, to try and help somebody else, to prevent it from happening again. Well, I, for one, think you're very brave. Um, it is, it is courageous. And again, I, I was oblivious. I had no idea who this person was, what they were doing, what they were capable of. So you enlightened a lot of people. You put that target out there for people to beware. And I think it was a very smart, and brave thing to do and to me it's no different than knowing that there's you know uh i don't know someone who beats children that lives across the street from you and you say eh, it's not my kid it's not my problem i'm gonna mind my own business and they just continue to do things so yes bringing it to light and sharing it with others so they are aware and uh, i think that's definitely a positive check mark on your box and again anyone who has had an encounter similar or the same or even close please help sally out with letting her know so she can add your story to her report so maybe they will dig deeper and they have to look at this seriously this is not some little troll saying your videos are stupid and you suck and you're an e-beggar. No, this is not it. And we don't want to wait until someone shows up at your door and either you are harmed or killed or you are forced to harm or kill the other person until the police show up and take it seriously. I think it's, it needs to be nipped in the bud now. And I think Sally has taken the steps in the, proper direction to make sure that this guy somehow is stopped and i hope that the police and google and youtube get off their asses and do something so it doesn't happen to anyone else thank you blog views i appreciate you allowing me to come on here and extend the message out to your viewers as well well, I hope we can get the word out, and I definitely appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me and get this story out because it's a story that needs to be heard. It's not all just uh, rainbows and sunshine. You do have to watch your back down here, and uh, thank you. And as always, this is Blind Views and Sightseeing Sally, and that's the way we see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Loud.